Welcome back and welcome to video number two. Uh, if you've come to this one, hopefully you didn't hate the first one, which is a great thing. Um, today's a nice and simple one. I've got the boards designed. You saw that in video one. Today, I'm going to build a house. Let's see how we get on. See you in a bit. I wanted the house to have a raised base, so I started by cutting out um, the rough area that I wanted. Um, I didn't really measure anything, this was kind of just what I thought would work as a size. I, 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 I think figuring out base sizes is quite tricky to work out how bigger things a building is going to be. If you make it fully to scale, it will just drown your, your battle board. So this was what I kind of thought was the most accurate, or not accurate, the most useful size for it. But I hadn't actually designed the boards at this point. So if you've watched the first video where I lay out the boards, this was, I kind of built this house whilst I was doing that. So I didn't really have a position in mind for it. I just thought, you know what, I want to build a house this is a bit of a prototype, see how it goes. So this, then I kind of had to retrofit and find a space for it when I was designing the boards afterwards um, to fit this in. But I didn't want the base to be five centimeters tall, which is what the polystyrene is. I thought that was too tall. That's, you know, if the figures are three and a half centimeters, which is six feet, you wouldn't really have the base of a house that was about eight feet tall. So I set it to three centimeters, which is about five feet, which I thought was a good height. And again, because this is for schools, this is going to be played with by a lot of children, it needs to be tough. And so I'm using the, the tougher XPS that I've got to make the stairs out of, and I will in a bit as well, coat the entire outside of the white polystyrene in um, the XPS as well. And that also meant that I could put a texture on it. So you can see the roller there next to the proxy cutter. Um, and that is what I'm going to use. It's not actually a proxy cutter, it's um, the Vivor. Um, polystyrene cutter but um, yeah so here we go so I've stuck the textured polystyrene to the outside the stuff on top with the cobblestones I did that using um, the same XPS but I cut it down to about two millimeters thick ignore my, my kind of growing bold spot there um, I then used some of the XPS to make a trim around the edge uh, I think I cut this about five millimeters deep four millimeters something like that it wasn't particularly deep but I wanted to use this to make um, kind of like, not curb stones as such, but that kind of edging stones around the edge of the board, around the edge of the base. And I glued that in place. Again, same as I did with the, the baseboards, I used the contact, uh, whatever it's called, uh, not contact adhesive, construction adhesive, um, no nails equivalent, um, whatever was cheapest, just to glue it into place. Seems to hold the foam really well. Uh, it dries really quick, it's tacky straight away so the stuff doesn't move around. Um, you know, you, it kind of fills in the gaps nicely and sets hard when it fills in the gaps. It doesn't expand like the Gorilla Glue does so you don't have to weigh it down. Uh, it, it just works really well for this kind of stuff. So I'm just using a pen uh, to engrave or describe where the markings need to be for the um, edges of the stones. Again, I'm not using a ruler, I'm not measuring anything, just eyeballing everything. Uh, seems to be the the most natural way of doing these things. Um, if you watch people like Eric, Hobby Workshop, and um, Leif, Des and Dice, people like that, you know, a lot of what they do is eyeballed and it works really well, it gives it a, a good effect. So I was just eyeballing most of this as I was going around. Um, Again, just filling in some space. There's a bit of a gap between the polystyrene, uh, between the cobblestone XPS and the edge. So just making sure I can fill those, and that's another benefit of the glue. You can use it as a filler as well for small gaps like that. Uh, using just the old technique of using a bit of scrumpled up um, tin foil, just to add some detail, some weathered detail to the edging stones. And then I got this idea from Leif over at Devs and Dice, and this was a really useful way to make the plaster walls that I wanted for the first layer. Using a foam card um, with the cardboard on the foam and so I cut it out to the kind of width of 
the whole house. So, so I've measured all four walls, added them together, and um, cut out the piece that I need for that width. And the trick with these bits is just to score through the cardboard and a little bit of the polystyrene. Don't want to cut all the way through because what we're going to use is we're going to fold along these points. And then that gives you a natural cavity to put in a wooden beam, which most of these kind of Tudor houses will have on or near the corners. And this just, it, what it also does is it gives a bit more structural strength to it. So you can see we can just fold it and snap it around. And then when it fits together, it gives you those corners, fits in nicely. And because of the width of the foam card is 5mm, we can just use 5mm wooden dowel in square um, profile to go into those gaps on the corner. So we're just making sure that we check it fits. There was a little bit of an overlap um, when I put the wood in, so I have to cut out a little bit of the edging. Again, a little bit bigger. I think in the end I went for the 6mm um, dowling to go in there and just cut it to size. Again, if you haven't got one of these cutters, they are such a worthwhile investment. It's so much easier than using a knife. Took me a while to figure out how to get this um, to get the angle profiler back in. Sit there figuring it out for a bit, but I promise they're not that difficult. That was just me not really thinking it through. And use them to just slice it down. I think this one was something like twelve pounds off Amazon, something like that. It wasn't massively expensive. The base is a little bit flimsy, being made of plastic, but. Um, you know, it does a job. I might put something in the bottom to, to kind of strengthen it up. Maybe use some foam or something, just so that it doesn't flex as much when I, I, I cut with it. So we can use the wood as well to join that fourth corner. And as long as I've measured correctly, it should make a perfect rectangle. Which, luckily, I have. Um, again, I'm using my old glue gun here. I, you might have seen in the other video that I've got a better glue gun now that's got um, dual temperature as well which makes it much easier for gluing together the foam uh, because this the one I'm using in this video is a little bit hot the glue comes out a little bit hot it does melt the um, XPS sometimes which can be a bit of a pain especially when you're trying to build with bricks or something like that or you're trying to glue something together so just go around and stick the four wooden corners in And uh, again, it adds a little bit more structural stability to it. it, makes it a bit tougher, which again is important because the children will be picking this up, they're going to be moving around it, you know, they're going to be having a look at it, it's going to be poked and prodded and have pressure on it, so anything I can do to strengthen the overall structure is just going to be a, a benefit in the long run. So I wanted to put a door in it. Um, using the figure again eyeballing it with kind of the figure I didn't really work out the ratio of height to width on the door or anything like that I just had a look at what I thought would be a good height um, most of kind of the advice online and things like that which makes sense is that if you make your floors about seven in, uh, seven centimeters high doors would probably be about five just again seven centimeters makes them about ten feet for the, for the um, ceiling height and five feet for doors about eight feet they're five centimeters so about eight feet so then just using some of the thinner five mil dial just to edge the door and good old coffee stirrer sticks to give it that Tudor look on the outside as well um, I've tried to use actual doweling where it's going to be exposed I'm not sure if I'll do that going forward it was a bit of a pain um, especially cutting it into the holes and where the wall kind of has broken down, which I'll do in a bit. Um, coffee stir sticks are much easier. Um, they don't always look great if the wall is broken. But 
you know, see how I kind of get on with future builds. Like I said at the beginning, this is this was a bit of a prototype. See what worked well, what worked well but was too much hassle. Um, what I might change going forward as well. So I think foam card was definitely easy to work with. It's definitely strong. Um, it's a bit of a pain. I have to go in and texture it later, which you'll see in the video, which you wouldn't have to do necessarily with XPS, although with XPS it doesn't have the best texture. Um, I've seen a couple of videos online of people using casting plaster um, to kind of paint over the foam card to give it a better texture. So I might try that next time. Uh, so I'm just having a look at how I want to destroy it. And again, this has got. I'm thinking at this point, how can I make it playable? The children have got to be able to get the figures into the building, which is kind of a you know a usual thing to be thinking about. But if you're playing with adults, generally they will be quite careful when they're putting their hands in and out of buildings. In my experience, the children are going to be less careful. So I need to make the holes a little bit bigger, even though they've got smaller hands. I need to account for the fact that you know they're probably going to be moving the figures around more in there as well. So that's I'm kind of thinking about all of that kind of stuff as well while I'm trying to design where it's going to be carved out. So this is I gave the entire base, all of the polystyrene, all the XPS, a coat of Mod Podge and black paint just to seal it so that when I spray paint it later it won't be it won't melt and then this is the mix I was talking about texturing the uh, foam cards this is just a mix of plaster Paris Mod Podge and brown paint just to give it a bit of color as well um, and it should give it a lot more strength it should give it a texture that I can then dry brush subtly later on but also that will make it feel a little bit more like um, a plaster wall, a wattle and daub kind of wall. Uh, as you can see there, that's where I've tried to work in a piece of dowling into the hole in the wall. And it's just a bit of a pain. If I'd have just done it with coffee stir sticks, it would have been easier. Uh, so this is when it's all dry. It took, I left it overnight. It probably took a couple of hours, but I left it overnight to be sure, just to make sure all the plaster mix was dry. Um, so I started to put in the roof beams for the first floor again. Just measuring them out, getting a rough length. I do break a few of them later because the children, again, people playing with it, need to be able to get their hands in there to play. And having a load of beams across the top would have just made that too difficult. So I put enough in that I can give it a bit of a floor so that characters can stand on the first floor. Um, but I don't want too many that they're going to get in the way of playing. And I was slightly concerned that leaving ones with an overhang, um, like I'm doing here, might make it weaker because it might get knocked it might give it a, a bit of a fulcrum point there to pivot on but actually once it's finished it is strong and again there I'm putting one in that's even shorter but having kind of felt it at the end of the build I, I'm pretty confident especially with the hot glue gun I think had I just super glued it or white glued it or something like that it might not have been strong enough but using the hot glue gun seems to give it a bit more strength and there's another wall on top which I add in a bit um, so I think it makes it strong enough and again I put these um, Y supports in just partly for aesthetic also because I think they will give it a bit more of a structural strength in case anybody leans on it it just supports it a little bit more um, and again you can see off to the right there I've added cross beams as well in between them all here I'm just measuring out uh, using exactly the same method as I did for the ground floor uh, measuring out the top floor I want it to have a um, angled roof so measuring that out putting that in um, and once I've cut that out I go round and again just eyeball um, a load of windows in it which I want to so this time I'm using the dowling on the outside I do mirror that a little bit on the inside but I don't mirror every single beam because I don't think they would have a beam on the inside everywhere where there is one it's more of an external aesthetic um, so again it's flicking to coffee stir sticks for this bit use coffee stir sticks to board out the windows and then again once all this is on it gets the same kind of coat so it gets stuck down and it gets the same coat um, in a bit which I think I do off camera at this point I lost a bit of footage so 
The roof has been made using the same kind of beams as I did for the floor, just stuck at an angle. The roof itself, the roof tiles are made using coffee stirrer sticks and then squares of cardboard cut out. Uh, I just use cereal cardboard. Gave the whole thing a base coat with black primer. I did actually run out of black airbrush paint in the end, so I kind of just took it outside and used a spray paint can. Um, I was fairly confident by this point that all of the Mod Podge and everything had sealed all of the XPS. So I then used the airbrush to give it a zenithal highlight. And what this will do, if you're not familiar, is it will give it those kind of colour gradients. So the darker areas will still be black, the lighter areas will be white or grey, and then when I put colour over the top of it, it should give it more of a gradient. So I go through, and I think this was Naz Nasdrag Yellow, something like that, the Citadel um, Games Workshop contrast paint. Went in and gave that a colour. Once I'd done this, I realised that the brown I'd done the wood with was far too pale. It just kind of blended in with the walls, which I didn't like. So I went back over the wooden beams with, I think it was Wildwood contrast paint. Um, I don't have any inks at the minute, um, which apparently are even better for doing this kind of thing with. So I do need to buy some inks. But yes, yeah, so I just gave that a coat. Then a watered down black paint, acrylic paint over the base. I did try, I was considering trying an oil paint wash, but I don't have any white spirits and the kind of white spirit equivalent that I've got didn't work very well. So I stuck with acrylics. This just gives it a nice darker stained feel, but it also fills in the gaps in between the book and beams as well. This I just used uh, one of the Citadel paints again. I can't, it's escaping me what it's called. I can't remember. Nighthawk Gloom, I think. Um, just to paint all of the tiles. Uh, again, I've sealed them beforehand with a bit of Mod Podge just to stop the paint from curling them. And then everything gets a nice heavy dry brush uh, with a pale grey to start with and then a white. And this just picks out all of the edges on all of the stonework, on all of the tiles, the wood, and just makes it a bit more lively. So then I used the Vallejo uh, grime texture, or grime um, paint, it's more of an ink. I wanted some creeping vines, and this stuff, which I think is from Woodland Scenics, looking at the package, I can't remember, but it's called Foliage, and it's brilliant because it's all strung together. It's lots and lots of their mossy flop, but strung together on very fine threads. So this is one of my favourite products to use for creeping vines and climbers and things like that. It sticks down really easily. Um, it sets really solid when you use kind of the um, scenic sealant from Geek, Geek Gaming or if you make your own. Um, it just is absolutely brilliant for doing it. You could go back afterwards and stick um, coloured flowers on it if you wanted flowered climbers. They also do an autumn range which I've now got uh, which I'm going to use on one of the later builds, uh, the Stone Bridge, which is more orange and red. And then it's just a case of adding kind of some of the mixes. This is blended up leaves, so just get a load of dry leaves from the garden, put them in a blender, and then that gives you nice ground foliage, kind of fallen leaves. This is one of the Geek Games Scenics, um, I think it's City Rubble, I can't remember, but they're basin materials. And then it's time for the final show. Here we go.